one step at a time. It's a mantra that she has recited over the years. From a high school teacher to an education entrepreneur, Lizzie Wanyoike knows what it means to actualize a dream. She resigned from her position as the principal of a secretarial college in 1999 and ventured out. It was not difficult for me uh, because I had already made a name in the, that institution. I used to be very passionate about uh, their work, what they were doing. You said it was not difficult for you to start your college. No, it wasn't. It was very easy. Really? Because I told you where I started. I was very close to my students. And they used to get jobs. In fact, I used to get them jobs. By the time they are doing their finals, I have already placed them. You know those days, I've already placed them in companies, in big companies, and they were very... Secretaries those days were in very high demand. She says the Nairobi Institute of Business Studies was founded on a need to ensure that the youth, no matter their grades, get a fair opportunity in college. Anybody with the C and below, they have best opportunities in doing diploma, diploma courses. They should not force themselves into doing things at, at that stage, at, at the university level. But this, the, the, the course they're going, the diploma they're going to, to, to get here is the one that will now make them enough, make them good enough to go to university. Wanyoika knows the power of walking a journey and picking the lessons along the way. When she started, she had just 25 students in a two-roomed space in Nairobi. At some point, frustrated by the demands of landlords, she moved to Roiro and constructed her own college on a 10-acre piece of land. Gradually, she has grown to three constituent colleges to accommodate the swelling numbers of about 7,000 students. What about registration? Yes, I had a lot of problems. You know, a woman uh, has so many disadvantages, especially when you are honest, when you don't want to compromise your values. I remember I, I, was, I was being forced to bribe, which I refused to bribe. I remember walking to one of the offices and crying there because they are talking in a language I could not understand, you know. And I did not know it's money they wanted. So it, it, I went through some challenges, but eventually I got the, the registration. And then when they came to inspect, they found a college, you know, ready with the students, because we are allowed to do that. And it's very neat and everything. So, uh, yeah, the problems, challenges were there, but it took off. Passion drives her engagement with her students. I really talk to the students. I'm very close. To, I love them. You know, it comes from my from my heart. I cannot wait, wait see our borders coming here drunk in the middle of the night. I'm not going to allow them. So I tell them there's a choice: you either stay here as a border, or you stay out there. And you know, out there, that's where the problems are. I can tell you, and what is happening in some of these hostels? Your sister, if she's there, maybe she's married, and you don't know she's uh, <laughs> already. And we stay of college, which lasts for two months, for two years. Then after that, they go their way. But life can change. It's very sad. Tonight, she launches her book titled Empowering the Youth Through Training. It partly speaks to the role of parents in their children's lives. Do you have time for your children? Parents have become so busy in their line of duty that they end up becoming strangers to their children. Part of her journey is also captured in this office space. This is what keeps me going on. That thank you, that one thank you, and you know makes you feel, you gives you the strength to go on and on and on. For Citizen Weekend, I am Anne Mawade.